Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Railify here, and I hope you're having a beautiful day today. So before we get into the story of the child rapist who part took in the Olympics, uh, do 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 uh do subscribe to the channel, maybe share it with friends, like the video, all of those standard things at Third Railify on YouTube, on X or Twitter, whichever you want to call it. And on Rumble. Rumble is the most important because, well, it's free. It's a free speech platform. The video you're watching now is deemed harmful content or hate content by YouTube. And so it is suppressed. I am demonetized and they hate me. I am the digital George Floyd, as it were. YouTube's knee is on my neck and I can't breathe. So with all that being said now, let's get into the story. So the Olympics were an absolute unmitigated disaster. I mean, the opening ceremony was comically bad. It was comically bad. The river was like polluted and, and toxic. There was cardboard anti-sex beds that the athletes could not get any reasonable sleep on. You most certainly couldn't hump on the beds, but you also couldn't sleep on them. The, the food at these Olympics was, um, what they say, it was not inducive to gold medal performances or world records. The, it was all vegan. There was no protein to actually fuel the athletes for their best performances. The athletes hated it. Everything about these Olympics actually sucked. A lot of athletes actually left the Olympic Village to stay in, in other hotels because it was just so disastrous. All of that aside, one of the things is an Olympic child rapist, Stephen Vandevelt, who's a grown man, an actual grown man, raped a 12-year-old girl multiple times. He, um, he was an athlete at these Olympics. And I've, I've, I've covered this, this story before, but this is now, this is the, the after part of that. He competed with his partner. And every time he took the, um, the court, volleyball court, the little sand pit, relentlessly booed even by his own country. So Steven Van de Velde sobs in his first interview after the games where he was booed and jeered over his appalling crime. This video may be a touch longer. Just stay with me. Convicted child rapist Stephen Vandeveld has sobbed in his first interview since the Paris 2024 Olympics where he was booed and jeered for crimes when he was competing for the Netherlands at beach volleyball. The 30-year-old, who served just one year of a four-year sentence for raping a 12-year-old girl, has spoken for the first time since his controversial participation at the Summer Games. The fact that he got a four-year sentence for raping a 12-year-old, like, like actually full-on sex with this, like, full-on with a, with a 12-year-old girl, and he's a grown man. He went cross-state lines, actually, cross-country lines. He was in the Netherlands and flew to England to inseminate a small child. And they're like, yeah, that's, that's four years. Why is that four years? Why isn't why isn't that all of the years? But then to serve just one? Are you kidding me? Anyway, so he has spoken for the first time since his controversial per participation. He was found guilty of three counts of raping the child in Milton Keynes in uh, 2014, but was selected because he was granted early release from prison and judged by national selectors to have paid his dues. That's right, you raped a 12-year-old girl multiple times. You served one year in a very cushy Netherland prison. Yeah, you've paid your dues to society. I really don't think he did. But the beach volleyball player did not get a warm reception while competing in the French capital and was eliminated at the round of 16 stage with partner Matthew Immers on August 4th. Nine days after his exit from the tournament, Vandeveld told a Dutch newspaper that he considered skipping the Olympics entirely and shockingly criticized the media for their reporting of the case. How dare you report that I raped a girl years ago, he says. How dare you report that? It's in the past. Let's, 
let sleeping dogs lie. Don't report that I've done a really, really bad thing and only got a slap on the wrist for it. Don't do that, media. In this photo here, he's all loved up with his wife. It's shocking how pretty his wife is. I just, I guess if you're a volleyball star and you're 6'6 six, six and whatever, I, I guess, I, I guess that means you get a pretty wife, but it, it's more than that. We'll talk about that in just a moment here. He told the newspaper, I definitely thought about it. Yes, I did something wrong 10 years ago. I have to accept that. But hurting people around me, whether it's Matthew, his volleyball partner, my wife, my child, that just goes too far for me. That's definitely a moment where I thought, is this worth it? Now, a question for you, dear viewer, beautiful, intelligent, dear viewer, is um, at what point do uh, we, society, that, you know what, um, you've done a crime, but it was long enough ago that we can, we can move past it. I mean, at what, at what point do we say it's fine that this guy did it? He, paid, he did pay his dues. Uh, time heals all wounds. It's in the past. Whatever. When can we do that? At what level of crime can we do that? I mean, I don't... I think I would have an easier time forgiving this fella, if he, like, I don't know, killed a guy in a bar fight or something, than, than this. I mean, even, even with this crime of raping a 12-year-old girl, I think you would need more than one year in a, in a cushy um, prison. I don't know. I guess that's maybe comment below and, and let me know your thoughts at, where, you know, at one point we, at what point do we say, yeah, okay, as a society, we can move on. Maybe it's not that big of a deal because of whatever circumstances. Vanderbilt was sentenced to four years in prison in 2016 after pleading guilty to raping a 12-year-old British girl in August 2014 when he was 19. The Dutchman had traveled from Amsterdam to the UK and raped the girl at a house in Milton Keynes. Despite being told by a judge that his conviction was career-ending, Van de Velt resumed his volleyball career after serving just 12 months of his four-year sentence. Van de Velt has successfully rebuilt his life since leaving prison to the extent that he is now married to a high-profile fellow volleyball professional, Kim Behrens of uh, Germany. The pair married in 2022, and they have a young son together. So obviously, she can look at him and go, yes! You did rape a 12-year-old girl. I'm fine with it. Let me hop on that. I just, I don't know. I wonder if she ever looks at his penis and goes, yes, that was in a child. Likely not, because, I don't know, Germans seem to be really forgiving of, of criminals or whatever. So his wife, Behrens, uh, is a police officer. <laughs> when she's not doing volleyball, She's doing policing. She is a, a, a police officer as, as her, her, re her real job. Um, so she dotes on her six uh, foot six tall husband and regularly posts loved up content on social media about their lives together. Although victims, advocates, lawmakers, and fans have called for Van de Velt to be banned from the Olympics, the IOC said it was powerless to stop the... Netherlands from sending an athlete who qualified in the usual way. But even if the IOC had power, they, they'd probably allow it because they allow men to beat up women now. I mean, in the beginning of this video, we talked about a disaster of what the Olympics was. Men beating up women in boxing was, was a part of that. However, he was not staying with other athletes in the Olympic vi uh, village after the British Olympic Association aired concerns over the matter with the IOC, they didn't want their athletes, you know, mingling with someone who, who uh, is a convicted child rapist. Dutch Olympic selectors supported Van de Velde's inclusion in their team and previously explained that he had met all the criteria needed to appear at the games in France's capital. Turns out the criteria is not that high. It's actually, I mean, you just need to play volleyball, it seems. Since 2018, Steven Van de Velde has been participating in international beach volleyball tournaments again following an intensive, professionally supervised 
trajectory, a spokesperson told Daily Mail. So they, they're basically like, I don't know, they're, they're like the, vo the volleyball people. The powers that be for, for uh, professional volleyball are like hand crafting, hand guiding his career, professionally supervised trajectory. They're like, yes, we shall help you grow and do your thing. Just don't be stupid. We shall repair what you broke. So, meanwhile, Stephen Vandeveld has met all qualification criteria for the Olympic Games and is therefore included in the group of athletes who formally passed over on July 4th from the Dutch National Federations to NOC, who then becomes responsible for them during the Olympic Games. Dutch officials also provided Vandeveld with special treatment while he competed in Paris, preventing him from speaking to reporters something typically required of all Olympians, and whisking him away from games surrounded by three bodyguards. I mean, I, I, I bet that was nice. I bet he liked that. DOC press attache John Van Vlert said, uh, two of the measures we took was we have uh, Steven sleeping outside the athlete's village, and the second one was, we don't want to do media questions in the mixed zones. We are protecting a convicted child rapist so that he can do his sport as best as possible for the tournament which he qualified for. I mean, I'm, I'm glad he, he just put it out there. He just said it. He just said it. We are protecting a convicted child rapist. Thank you for your honesty. A Paris 2024 official added Van de Velt was taken away with three bodyguards. Normally, everyone comes through the mixed zone, but he didn't come through to avoid any media violence. You know, words are violence. We aren't happy with that, but the decision was made at the top of the IOC. Van de Velt's partner, Imners, who's 23, also defended his teammate during the tournament, saying he's had his punishment. And now he's really kind. He, he also said that, you know, his partner, Van de Velt, the, the child rapist, doesn't at all talk about or explain or anything about, about the uh, rape of a 12-year-old he did. The Dutch pair qualified for the tournament at the Eiffel Tower Stadium, ranked 11th in the world and qualified from their group despite losing their opening game to Italy. So speaking after their first match at the Paris Games on July 28th, Imners was asked if Van de Velt ever expressed any remorse to, to him for the rape, to which he replied, no, he doesn't. He doesn't explain it. If, if you had done something awful and it was in the public eye, would, would you guys be like, you know, I re really wish I didn't do that. I just, that totally sucks. I, 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 made, a, I made an error. Maybe you would. Maybe you wouldn't. This guy chooses not to. The duo then defeated Chile and Norway and set up the round of 16, which they ultimately lost. Controversy around Vandeville's selection generated a lot of discussion during the games. My video on this about how he was going to be there, you know, got a little bit of attention and a lot of comments. A lot of viewers said uh, he probably shouldn't go. It just it doesn't feel right. I mean, imagine the, the 12 year old's family watching the Olympics. And then they're like, oh, yeah, that dude there with the volleyball, he's the one that raped, you know, our 12-year-old our girl. You know what I mean? But again, at what point do you fully pay your debt to society? I mean, I, I, that's, that's kind of the question here. At what point do you get to re-enter society and, you know, not have, I don't know, not a stigma, but, you know, your crime dogging you? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. A petition calling on Olympic chiefs to kick Vandeveld out of the games gained more than uh, 94,000 signatures. And the British Olympic Association expressed its anger about his competing, probably because it was a little British girl that got the, um, well, the end of the stick. In a statement, the Netherlands Olympic Committee said it was implementing concrete measures to ensure a safe sporting environment for all participants. It means him, the rapist. They're implementing measures for the rapist. And if they don't mean that, they're low-key suggesting that other people weren't safe. These measures include, at the request of Vandeveld, 
alternative accommodation for uh, Van de Velde and no media contact during his stay in Paris. He claimed that the measures were in line with standard practice and had been developed following a thorough risk assessment taking into account all affected groups. During his, his trial, so we're going back a bit now in history, so during his trial less than a decade ago, um, the Aylesbury Crown Court heard how Van de Velde had traveled to the UK and met up with his victim and had sex with her more than one time because, remember, it was three counts. So the, the prosecutor at the time uh, described that the, the victim described that she had met uh, Van de Velde on Facebook. They spoke regularly through that, and he had made the little girl feel special. She certainly made it clear that she was seven years younger than him. This relationship over social media was taking place over a period of time. The prosecutor had said the volleyball player's victim had added him as a friend on Facebook after he commented favorably on one of her photos. But what is this volleyball player doing? This grown man doing looking at 12-year-old girl photos and commenting on them. That's weird. That's weird. The following day, the pair slept in cardboard boxes under a stairway at Premier Inn. Having again been unable to book a room, she told him to. She took him to her empty house, and he took her virginity. Before he returned to the Netherlands, Vandeville advised her to get the morning after pill, as they had not used contraception. It was her visit to a family planning clinic that alerted the authorities who stepped in because of the girl's young age. He almost got away with it. That's the craziest thing. He, like, rapes this girl, could have very easily knocked her up or given her any manner of disease, and uh, almost got away with it. If, if, um, if she didn't go to family planning, he gets away with it. If they didn't ask the right questions, he gets away with it. If police didn't step in, he gets away with it. So the sportsman, um, Van Aveld, was then extradited to the UK where he, he was arrested. Um, and then he later admitted three counts of rape against a child. He says it was a spur of the moment decision to fly to England. Just a spur of the moment. I commented on the photo. We started talking. And then all of a sudden, I spur of the moment showed up. I doubt it. I, I, I bet it was, it was a planned thing. Like like grooming, but his defense lawyer says that he he he's not a predatory young man. Well, I don't know about that really. The um, Ellsbury Crown Court heard that his victim had later self harmed after the trauma of her encounter with him. So this this isn't a uh, situation where it's just oh yeah she was just this 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 young girl who was you know starstruck and you know put out and everything's fine. No, she has trauma trying to kill herself over it. So he was sentenced to four years in prison. He was transferred from the UK back to the Netherlands to serve the remainder of his, um, his, his punishment under a treaty between the two countries. The treaty allowed for his charges and sentence to be adjusted in line with Dutch law, meaning the charge of rape was changed to fornication which is crazy so he gets he gets a a serious rape charge which for some reason the uk gave him a slap on the wrist for and then due to the uk treaty with the netherlands he gets sent back and then as he gets sent back the the charges and all that stuff gets converted into dutch law which is even less strict than you the already not so strict uk law and then it's not even a slap on the wrist it's just like a it's just like a tap on the head bad that's it due to the punishment being less harsh for this offense in the netherlands which you have to ask hey dutch people netherland officials why don't you have a punishment for child rape what the fuck is the matter with you no, that, that's a real question. Why is child rape not that big of a deal? Anyways, due to the punishment being less harsh for this offense in the Netherlands, it meant uh, that Van de Velde was eligible for release in 2017, having only served one year of his original sentence. So I guess 
if if you're gonna if you're gonna do child rape, maybe the Netherlands is the place to do it. But don't do it because that's bad. You belong in a wood chipper. Following his release, he says, I do want to correct all the nonsense that had been said about me when I was locked up. I did not read any of it on purpose, but I understand that it was quite bad because you're a child rapist. It should be bad that I have uh, been branded as a sex monster, as a pedophile that I am not. Not really. Dude, you commented on a little girl's post and then you groomed her and then you flew to you flew in a fucking airplane. You queued up at an airport. God knows how many hours to get on a plane to fly across the fucking English channel to bang a child. I think you're pretty. I think that qualifies as pedophile. Everyone can have their opinion about me, but it's only fair if they also know my side of the story. Dude, your side of the story was like, it was a spur of the moment idea. No, that's not a side of the story. It's bullshit. Anyways, this video's a touch longer, a touch longer than. Than, than normal, but you know, I I don't know. Like, subscribe, share, help me grow this channel, specifically on Rumble. If you haven't downloaded the app, definitely do that. Rumble has vastly improved over what it was, say, maybe a year ago. Um, help, it, it, helps, it helps me grow. And uh, I guess thank you for watching my harmful content. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. <laughs>